Good morning, everyone. Kevin with Flux here. Thank you for joining me today in our overview on add-ons. Today, we'll be going over the items you can access in the add-ons menu in the admin panel. If you should have any questions at any time during the webinar, please type it in the question section. We'll be dedicating the last few minutes for questions and answers, so we'll be saving all of your questions for then. If we do not get to your question in time, we'll try to curate those and answer them offline. So let's go ahead and get started. In this add-ons overview, we'll be answering the following questions. What is an add-on? How do I locate the add-ons menu? What are the add-ons available to me? What can I do with and change in the attributes menu for each add-on? And as I said earlier, there'll be a quick Q&A after the overview. Now, you might be wondering what an add-on is. An add-on is often a feature that can optionally be enabled in your Flex site. For instance, some clients do not utilize our grantee and reviewer external portal, nor do they utilize OFAC or Signals. They act like small extensions of what your Flex site already does, and they help refine processes so that you can better manage your grants data. In past webinars, we've described the menu options on the far left side of the admin panel as the administrative tasks available to anyone with administrative privileges. Plugins are items that can be enabled by an administrator with the help of Flex support or an advanced services team to provide the optimal experience and execution um, of your day-to-day -day tasks, such as enabling electronic signatures through DocuSign or having grantees applied through our very own grantee portal. The plugins menu includes both external integrations and add-ons uh, because these both are ways to customize your Flex site and are both completely optional. Now let's talk about how to get to the add-ons menu. First, we'll want to make sure that we're in the admin panel. Once you see those tabs show up in the left-hand side of your window, we'll click on plugins. there and then we're going to go ahead and click on the add-ons tab at the top of your screen next to the integrations tab here you'll be able to access all of the add-ons available for you to enable your flex site now let's go over each of these add-ons Each of these add-ons hold different editable attributes pertaining to these items of your Flex site. The landing page, the grantee portal, the reviewer portal, the evaluation portal, the visualizations portal, signals, census data, and lastly, OFAC. Again, I'd like to reiterate that some of these items, such as the new reviewer portal, signals, and OFAC, uh, these can be enabled here. If you should have any questions about enabling these, please go ahead and visit our knowledge base for more details on each. So now the first one we have here is the landing page. Let's go over the attributes for this add-on menu item. So the landing page is the first Flux screen that you will encounter. It is the first place to log in, and for some clients, it's the place where registrations or LOIs are created and submitted from. Here's an example of a landing page. As you can see, here is where your user will log in, over to the left. And if it should fit your organization's processes, users can create accounts and submit their registrations, also known as LOIs, over to the right. Now let's go back to the attributes of the landing page add-on. So once you click on the landing page button, the attributes menu will populate over to the right. The first thing at the top you'll see is a checkbox to enable the classic non-portal login style of landing page. 
If you click to check this and click save at the bottom of the attributes menu, your landing page will look like this. Now what this means is that the landing page is just for signing in and isn't meant to be branded with your organization's logo and branding, uh, nor are users expected to submit registrations and LOIs through your landing page. Most clients, regardless of whether their users submit registrations and LOIs through landing pages or not, uh, choose to brand their landing pages. Okay, let's go back to the attributes page. Uh, below this, you'll see a way to customize the text that you saw on my landing page over to the right, where my users can submit their registrations. Now here is where you can customize that language utilizing a rich text editor. Below this, you'll find the information text that can be found once a user clicks to fill out the registration form. This text usually provides instructions, warnings, and process information so that a user is aware of what happens upon submitting his or her registration. Now near the bottom of the attributes, you'll see that you can customize the text on the button that leads to the registration form. For example, let's say that your organization invites grantees. This, thus, this registration is simply uh, for collecting information and is not intended as an LOI that can be promoted into a grant request. So you could have the button say, create your account now or submit your information. Or let's say that your organization does use this feature for users to submit LOIs that could be promoted into grant requests internally by you and your users. This button can then say, submit LOI or apply now. Either way, you could customize this button's text. Below this text box is a checkbox to disable automatic LOI field mapping. On the LOI card on your internal dashboard, you have the option to connect new users and their respective organizations to user and organization cards in your site. This checkbox makes it so information cannot map from the LOI card to the user and organization card. Even if you do not utilize this feature of Flex to promote LOIs to grant requests, we do not suggest that you check this box unless you have discussed the need for disablement with our team upon implementation. Next up is the grantee portal. Now, <laughs> there's a lot going on here, but at the top you'll see a series of check boxes. The first disables RTUs or real-time updates for grantees. This means that grantees would not see a red bubble with the number of notifications awaiting review on their portal. The second checkbox allows grantees to edit reports. This may seem like an item that should be in the permission section of user settings. However, just like allowing your users to edit documents when the parent isn't editable, which by the way can be found in global settings, uh, this is an overarching permission that allows your grantees to edit reports. Moving along, the third checkbox allows your grantees to select a document type when uploading a document to a record, uh, such as an agreement. This depends on the document types you have available and the card documents of the admin panel. The fourth checkbox pertains to any records in which your grantee needs to enter the name of an organization. This dropdown could suggest certain organization names as the grantee begins to type. Now, if you believe this to be a security issue, such that you would not want your grantees to see other organization names in your system, you would not have this checked. If you have a regrant feature in which a grantee is applying to renew a grant, you could have this enabled so that he or she can easily find his or her organization. As a best practice, we usually have this unchecked. The fifth is a checkbox that gives you abil the ability to give a grantee, grantee moderator privileges. This means that a grantee can edit organization and user information for his or her organization. Think of this as making a user an admin for his or her organization. For more information on this func functionality and how to set this up, please visit our knowledge base. Okay, moving along, the sixth is a checkbox that lets the grantee uh, save a form without validation. 
We do not recommend that you check this box as grant requests that do not have all fields filled out upon promotion to grant cannot be promoted. It's always best to have grantees fill out all necessary information at each step of your workflow without having to worry about going back later to fill out anything mixed. Below these checkboxes is a series of rich text editors. The first is the landing page text for your grantees. This is often overridden by a welcome page built on generic templates. For more information on, gene on how generic templates work, please check out our training webinar videos on the knowledge base. Now below that text box are two dropdowns. The first allows you to select which types of records to include in the list of requests a grantee sees. This can be a request in which the user's primary org is the program or fiscal org, so fiscal org associated with that record. If the user is the program lead or both, um, usually we have this default to the first option. The next dropdown allows for you to restrict the upload format a grantee can upload to the documents components of his or her records to, to PDF. Or you can allow for grantees to upload other document types such as a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet. Below these dropdowns are more rich text editors for various emails sent through Flux to users on behalf of your site. Now we will be hosting a webinar on these emails in early May. Please check our upcoming training calendar on our knowledge base to register for this webinar, and we hope to see you there. The next add-on is the reviewer portal. Here we have again a few checkboxes to see at the top of the attributes. The first enables the new and improved reviewer portal. Please check out our knowledge base for more information before enabling the new portal. Uh, the second checkbox allows for you to enable the conflict of interest flow on reviews. The third checkbox would be checked if you do not have a conflict of interest as part of your reviewer process. And lastly, the rich text editor below these checkboxes allow you to input landing page information, which again could be overrated by a generic template. So the evaluation portal, which is the next add-on, is coming soon. Please stay tuned in notes from our product team on when this will be available. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next add-on, which is the visualization portal. This is an option to visualize your grants data in charts and graphs from your internal dashboard. Usually, you'll have this set up for you upon implementation. You'll be able to switch between the standard internal dashboard and this visualization dashboard. Um, you could also create those visualizations of your data from the action bar on every card of your dashboard. The next add-on is signals. Signals are ways to leave notes on records in your site and notify other users upon doing so. You could enable access to signals by clicking on the first checkbox. The second checkbox allows you to annotate signals field by field on a form. So let's say you want to leave a note for someone on your team to check out the project summary on a proposal. You do so by mentioning the user, much like tagging him or her on social media, on the project summary signals. To learn more about signals and user mentions, please check out our knowledge base. If collecting census data on a grantee's organization is part of your process, this will have been discussed and configured upon your site's implementation. The API can only be accessed by those on your team who have access upon implementation. Now, this is rarely used, but is certainly an option for our clients and uh, utilize the census component on the organization card. Lastly, the OFAC add-on allows you to check organizations and their employees against the Office of Foreign Assets Control's list of flag persons. You can configure the threshold for OFAC scores here. 
For more information on enablement and setup, please again visit our knowledge base. So this concludes today's webinar on the add-ons menu, and I hope you enjoyed it. If there's any features I did not cover extensively, we'll be hosting trainings in the future to address these features. You may also learn about any of these features by visiting our knowledge base. Okay, so now let's open it up to some questions. Okay, first question, how are add-ons different from integrations? It's a good question. Um, integrations are external integrations from third-party products that you can integrate with your Flux platform. Um, for instance, you could enable DocuSign to allow for electronic signatures. Add-ons are extensions of features available exclusively on Flux. Okay, looks like we've got one more here. Uh, what if we don't use the grantee portal, but want to use the emails in the grantee portal attributes menu? This is a great question. Uh, these emails are actually not limited to users on the grantee portal. Uh, these emails are sent to appropriate users upon their account creation, uh, submitting a registration form, and connection to the system by an admin or one of your teammates. Again, uh, we're going to go ahead and be hosting a webinar on these emails in the near future, so stay tuned for more details. Okay, it looks like that's the last question that's come in here. So we're gonna go ahead and call it for today. Uh, again, you'll be able to find video recordings of past webinars on our knowledge base. So today we went over the add-ons menu in the admin panel. We learned what is an add-on, how do I locate the add-ons menu, what are the add-ons available to me, what can I do with and change in the attributes menu for each add-on. To learn more and access the video recording of this webinar, please visit our knowledge base at flux.io slash knowledge. There you'll be able to find a list of our upcoming webinars, links to register for future webinars, and recordings of past webinars under training webinars. Or of course, feel free to ask us support and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks again for joining us today and we hope to host you again at our next training. Have a great day. Oh, Jesus Christ.